Well, hello everyone. This is your friendly neighborhood pastor coming to you from Christ the King Lutheran Church in Escanaba, Michigan. Uh, we're getting ready for the fifth Sunday after Epiphany. And our passage for this weekend coming up is from Matthew chapter 5 again. We're, we're again in the beginning of the Sermon on the Mount. And we're transitioning from the Beatitudes now to some of the implications for um, all these blessings that Jesus says. And we'll get some of those um, uh, expectations, uh, those commands to, you know, how do we live in light of, of what Jesus has just said about being blessed in so many uh, ways by him, by a gracious Heavenly Father. So, uh, without further ado, our reading for this week is from Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 through 20. So, as always, let me go ahead and read the passage for you and then give you some thoughts and reflections on it. Jesus says, You are the salt of the earth. But if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything but thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one after lighting a lamp puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come to not abolish, but to fulfill. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter, will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, Unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. This passage we can break up into two sections, uh, because Jesus in the beginning part here, the first half he talks about the, the, uh, the implications of, of being blessed. Jesus says, because you are blessed, therefore that means you are the light of the world. That means that you are going to be salt in the world, that you will be light in the darkness, you will be salt in a tasteless world. And so, um, because we have been blessed, therefore we live in the following way. Not because we have to, but because we want to, because we get to, because we have um, no other reason not to. Since we have been blessed by God, our lives and faithful obedience will look like this. We will look like salt and light in a, in a world full of darkness and losing its taste. The second half is a passage uh, where Jesus talks about the, the, the significance of the law, that Jesus has not come to sweep uh, the entirety of the law under the carpet, in, in this sense that he's more referring to uh, generally the, the, the Old Testament um, commands uh, that are revolving around morality, and, and how do we know that? Well, because um, in chapter 5 and in chapter 6, he'll go and unpack some of some of those things. Um, and so the, the, the thrust of the law still remains, that in other places Jesus says, uh, the law can be summed up in two, two ways. Um, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and love your neighbor as yourself. The summary of the commandments is to love. And Jesus says, I'm not getting rid of any of that. Um, even though you have been blessed, there still are those expe expectations for living in light of the um, light that Jesus says we are. Um, being the salt that Jesus says we are, uh, that we don't misuse the gift of being blessed by God through his son by the power of the Holy Spirit because if we do that's throwing back in the face of God a gracious gift of his own blessing his divine favor upon us we're throwing that back in his face and so what we see in chapters 5 6 and 7 is kind of this escalating uh, heightening um, of what it means to be a disciple that, it, that it's not easy and Jesus doesn't make any um, concessions to that. He, to, to follow him is to to die to self, to die to our own pride, to die to our own um, our own personal righteousness or perceived righteousness because we need the righteousness of another. We need his. Uh, we need him to to do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. And so this passage again, it, it's it's um, last week it was more looking internal because we've been blessed. 
This is what this means for us. And now we're kind of going externally focused that because we've been blessed, this is what we then do. This is how we respond to the good news that we are salt and light. Jesus says you don't have to become salt or light, that you don't earn being salt or light, just like you didn't earn being blessed, but you simply are. Jesus says you are salt, you are light. And so shine, you know, be, be the light that Jesus says you are, uh, and, and be salty, be, be the salt that Jesus says that you are. And so um, a lot of indicatives here, uh, you are, you are, but there's also those imperatives um, that we will live a faith-filled life in obedience to the commands of God, not because we have to, but because we want to. Uh, one of my favorite theologians, Gerhard Ferdy, once put it in this way, that the command um, of the commands of God for the redeemed, instead of being commands, instead become promises for our neighbor. We love and serve our neighbor, but not because we have to, not because we have a taskmaster behind us telling us, you better, you better, you better, or else, uh, but we fulfill what God requires and asks of us because we want to, because we love to, because we want to show the world that we are God's light, we reflect God's light, and we are God's flavor in a tasteless world. We get to do that. that that's the great gift of, of being a Christian in this world. We get to do all these things that God asks of us. Um, and so just some opening thoughts uh, on, on this very powerful passage. Uh, a lot of other things going on there, but let that suffice for now. We'll be unpacking some of these other things in Matthew chapter 5 next week. Uh, and so may God bless you as you dig deeply into his word, savor what he has to teach you this week in Matthew chapter 5 verses 13 through 20. And may your study be richly guided by the power and presence of the Holy Spirit of God as well. God bless. Take care. We'll talk to you next time. Bye.